I'm Don Shipley, retired Navy SEAL Senior Chief, and I'm doing a camouflage and concealment class today. Hey, I'm Austin Rogers. I spent four years with Riverine Squadron 1. I've also been playing Airsoft for about 11 years now, and I'm going to show you how to uh, paint your rifles and paint your helmets. I'm going to demonstrate six different rifle paint jobs on six different rifles, as well as two different paint jobs for your helmets. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to camouflage your personal equipment. My name is Chris Ketcherside. I'm here to talk to you today about the history of camouflage. I am a retired Marine. I had 20 years in the Marine Corps. I retired as a major. I have a master's degree in the history of land warfare. I am a quintessential history nerd. So there's two types of camouflage uh, that you use because basically in any form of warfare there's two types of operations. There's a reconnaissance operation, get in, get out without anybody knowing you were ever there. Leave no trace, no footprints, and get out quietly. And there's direct action, where you expect to engage the enemy. You're expecting to make contact with them. What I'm going to be covering today is practical weapons painting. This isn't going to be anything super fancy, hydro dipping, coating, anything like that. This is just simple stuff. It's a very simple process that you can execute with stuff you can pick up at Walmart. The problem with asking a history professor about the history of anything is that you're going to get a long, long, detailed, long-winded answer. And so here we go. Now, if you were a girl, would you want to be his uh, girlfriend? No. Almost. You will here in a minute. People don't hang their guns, which kind of baffles me. They'll just set them down on the ground, kind of spray away. doesn't really make any sense because you can't get a feel for how one side of the gun looks versus the other, whereas if you hang it, you can just give the gun a quick spin. Give the gun a spin, you see if the sides are about even, and once they are, you know you're done. Very simple. Uh, let me tell you something about a ghillie suit. A ghillie suit is extremely hot. There's big heavy suits, and they snag up on everything. So a lot of uh, snipers are just worried about this profile of somebody seeing it. They're worried about their arms, their shoulders, their face, and their head from a final firing position, and that's what they're concealing up. Now you've got some different colors in there to break up the overall outline of the rifle and hopefully draw attention away from your head. There's a lot of ways of getting people's attention when you're on a patrol, somebody that's doping off and not paying attention to you and throwing a rock at him, snapping your fingers, uh, is not the way to do it. Well, you don't need to do it often. The easiest way to get somebody's attention at night on a patrol or during the daytime is to go. It doesn't carry far. It doesn't sound like anything. It's not a you know, something that will grab people's attention. It doesn't sound man-made. It's just a simple. A lot of people will take paper towels, things like that, and stuff them into their magwell. For me, Maybe I'm lazy, but I prefer using something that's designed to fit in the magwell to ensure the tightest possible seal. Various detritus you may find when you're out in the uh, woods and things like that. Uh, but a lot of guys like wearing gloves. I like my sense of touch. Stick some tape on the lenses themselves and leave these open when you're painting so you can paint the inside. Just again, so you don't have a forehead level black dot draws attention right where you don't want to get shot. 